hey, how you doing, Duff here? And um, I was thinking about it, and you know, other than my unboxing video that I did with the, the Flash Forge Finder, I haven't really posted anything else other than some time lapses of some of the things that I made. And I had wanted to kind of go over some of the um, things that I've run into as a novice free printer. Um, you know, things I've run up against and, and how I've gotten around them to this point. Um, when I first started printing, one of the things that annoyed me was oozing. And what was happening was I would start to print and as the nozzle got to uh, temperature, right before the print, I'd have this, this, you know, this little string of plastic that started to come out. And um, it seemed odd to me, but really it was, if I got around that just by some procedural changes. Basically what we do now is before we do a print, um, we're there with a little paper towel and then just as it comes up to temperature and, and the head moves into position to start, I'll give it a quick wipe just to get as much excess off the extruder as possible. And uh, knock on wood, that's, that's worked fine. It's a, it's a little annoying, but it's not a big deal. And the other thing that we did was pretty much anything, almost everything that I print, I put a brim on. So it gives it a chance for the extruder to totally clear as it does a border around your print first. And I would say 90% of what I print, I do on a raft as well. Um, and that was, again, to help with um, dealing with any leftover filament from uh, oozing and also to provide better adhesion while printing. I don't know if you can see right now, but what, I, what I've been doing on my print plate is we uh, just use painter's tape. I'm not using a glue stick, I'm not using hairspray. We just have some uh, standard blue painter's tape on there and uh, we've had very, very little adhesion problems since doing that. So that's the way that we've gotten around. Um, so, because when I printed a few things earlier, um, I did have some issues with some lifting and that kind of stuff. And I think the raft really helps with that as well because it gives you a good solid layer, lays down a lot of material, uh, so you get good adhesion. So if you're having adhesion problems, I would recommend doing a raft. Um, as far as the slicer, the flash print 3D slicer that comes with the, the, the um, flash forge finder, I think it's pretty good. Um, I haven't really had a problem with it. Um, intuitive enough that I figured out how to do basic, thing, basic things like resizing, moving. Um, some models for the um, Widowmaker gun that, that we printed, I actually had to, to slice the, the uh, pieces in order to, to print them. I had to slice them into two pieces uh, because they were too big for the print area. So that was, uh, that was something that I learned to do in flash print and it was not very hard. Um, i trying to think, we printed a bunch of stuff. I mean, the biggest is the Widowmaker gun, which um, I'll put a picture of it here. It's, it was between 30 and 40 pieces, I think. And, you know, printing it took days and days and days. And Cindy's has spent days, if not weeks, assembling everything, uh, smoothing it, painting it. So it looks really good now, um, but it was a lot of work. Um, I printed some um, just little trinkety things. I printed a a statue of um, Arthas from World of Warcraft, the Lich King. I printed a lot of functional things. I printed a mud guard for my electric unicycle. I've printed um, a phone case. I've printed a phone stand that I use at work to hold my phone at an angle where I can see it while it's charging, uh, while at work. I printed a lampshade. I printed um, holder, a spool holder here. And I've even started to print parts for the next 3D printer that I'm getting. And uh, I haven't really mentioned that anywhere, but I'm getting a, well, I ordered one of the CR-10s. And what attracted to me uh, to that printer was, it's, if you look on the internet, it's all over the place. Because it's a combination of size, um, the, 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 the print area size is just huge. It's something like 12 inches by 12 inches by 16 inches high which is a huge, huge print volume. And um, the components are, are relatively reliable, easily modelable, and people are just loving it because the printer only costs around $400. It's $100 less than what I paid for the finder. So that's, that's kind of shocking. So I'm very interested in seeing what's gonna happen once I get that. I've been doing lots and lots of um, education, self-education, watching some videos about the CR-10, some of the uh, gotchas, because there, there are definitely some gotchas. It's a straight from China printer, so uh, well, there's, there's almost always issues with uh, 
quality control when you have a China product, it seems. So I think I have a pretty good handle on that and I'll be sure to cover it when I do receive the printer. Uh, but I'm looking forward to it. It'll allow me to print some really, really cool things, some big things. Um, it has a heated bed, so I have an option to do ABS, although I probably would have to, to enclose the printer somehow to do that. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing all that kind of stuff, but that's down the road. I ordered it a week ago, a week and a half, and um, from what I understand, there's, there's a pretty good back order, so I'm not sure exactly when I'm going to get it. Um, I'm trying to think, as far as the finder, what else I've run into? Oh, last night I had to clean the extruder for the first time. It seemed like some filament was jammed in there. I did a filament change and I couldn't get it to to totally clear the nozzle, so I had to take it apart. Basically, you take the cover off and then there's um, two screws that hold the, the motor on that, that drives the filament. You pull that out and that gives you access to the tube that goes into the, the nozzle, the, the hot end. and. Um, Using and this is all using tools that come with the finder. I was able to to push the remaining filament through and then load some new stuff. So it wasn't hard. And it was a good experience because anyone that does three D printing will tell you that there's no way that you can avoid having to uh, clear a jammed nozzle. That's a very common problem. Um, as far as the bed leveling, I, I like the auto leveling feature on this. Or well, it's not auto leveling. Sort of. It has an electric sensor that 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 tells you when you're at level and. Uh, Maybe it's just me, but I haven't really had to level it much at all. I've just been kind of printing stuff, printing stuff, and I haven't noticed that I've had any problems, so I haven't re-leveled the bed. You see, you'll see some people talk about leveling the bed every three prints or five prints. I haven't, so um, I guess my theory is if it's not broke, don't fix it. You know, if, it, if it's printing fine, I'm going to leave it like that. So yeah, so I'm not a big bed leveler, um, but yeah, other than that, I'm really, really pleased with the Finder. It's um, it's done a good job. I've done some really uh, cool prints, like uh, a, one of those mesh skulls. I think I have a picture of it somewhere. I'll stick it up here. That little ring that has a skull on the front of it, and that was a very small, detailed thing. And uh, it does a really good job. I haven't had to mess with the settings. It's not like I tweak the settings for every print, usually. Um, only if I download something off Thingiverse and it tells me to use specific settings, I'll change it. But otherwise, I've just been uh, running pretty much the same settings. I think it's like 10% infill and 0.3 millimeter layers, I think. That's what I print most stuff in and it seems to be working okay. So that's it. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Not really. I have, I, you can't see it from this side, but I have a, I have a security camera pointed at my 3D printer. Uh, my, my house DVR is in here, so it's very easy to add a camera. So. I can actually check on the status of prints on my phone uh, anywhere I have a web browser, so that's convenient and uh, good to avoid wasting a bunch of filament if you have a problem. Uh, but yeah, I think that's it for now. Right now I'm printing a, another mudguard for my electric unicycle, so I'm excited to see how that turns out. But really, that's it for now. Flash Forge Finder, extended review, all good. Very good, very good printer for uh, the first time 3D printing user. In my opinion, you know, it, it takes some of the complication out of the picture, and um, seems to be very capable. Really, the only the only negative I see is that the, the print area seems a little on the small side to me. It's 140 millimeters square, so somewhat limiting. But um, you can still do a lot of stuff. Like if you you know, if I told you it was a 140 millimeter print area, and you look at that gun that we printed, I, I, I would have told you that would have been makes them possible but it's possible so so that's it hopefully uh, well hopefully nothing if you have any questions comments tips advice feel free to leave them below if you're a first time visitor to the channel or just maybe have never gotten around to subscribing please take a moment to uh, like and subscribe if you do truly like the content I would appreciate it, it helps the channel out and that's it till next time Duffman out Thank you.